My name is Cameron Roth, and you stated that there was nothing wrong with DDT and it shouldn't have been taken off the market. What is your reasoning for that? I don't know if I stated there was nothing wrong. I said it was not a carcinogen. Yeah. Um, DDT is, uh, was a subject of a kind of hysteria in the, in the early 1960s. Um, there are a few things to say about it. One is that because it is actually quite safe, you can eat it. And they, they, the reason why we know that is there was an experiment in which they fed it to prisoners for a couple of years, and they ate a certain amount of the powder every day, and they were okay. Um, there was also, at one time, a very unusual and much uh, undiscussed study which seemed to suggest that DDT exposure decreased your risk of cancer. Um, but the short version is, it was heavily used, it was clearly overused. Um, it was, it's, uh, the extent to which it remained in the environment, the extent to which it became concentrated going up the food chain, the extent to which it was deleterious to birds, the extent to which it thinned eggshells, those were all things that people were terrified about. And, um, and the information that they had, if you go back and look at, for example, Rachel Carson and the evidence that she cites, that kind of evidence is completely unacceptable 40 years later. It's, it's, you know, the guy who's doing the eggshell studies, it turned out he was also not giving the birds enough calcium and that alone will, you know. The final outcome, as I understand it, is that um, some birds of prey are absolutely susceptible. Peregrine falcons, for example, are absolutely susceptible to DDT. Um, DDT arguably has certain other effects. It's never been demonstrated to be carcinogenic. And the reason why any of this is a point of discussion is that by eliminating DDT, malaria worldwide exploded. Malaria had been the great scourge of mankind in the 20th century. One by one, illnesses like yellow fever and stuff were, were either dampened down. Most of these diseases were in the United States, you know, in 1900. The United States had malaria in the South, for example, and it was gone. So uh, DDT took the total number of malaria cases in India, I think, down to 50,000 a year. I mean, some, it was a true miracle, not that it wasn't, you know, also uh, coming into situations where there were malaria-resistant mosquitoes and so on. But nevertheless, across the globe, it was a powerful, powerful way to save lives. When it was banned by Ruckel's house in 72 or 73 in this country, he specifically excluded medical uses uh, from the ban so that it could be used abroad. Environmental groups eager to make a, um, a name for themselves pushed hard, and in fact the ban was, I think, really made final around the world in 2001, which is way too late. By then, people knew that that um, the ban was, was lethal in terms of the number of people who died. And something like 30 million people have died as a result of, of banning this substance. And I think it's one of the great scandals. I mean, that's, that's more people than Hitler and Stalin together killed. And I'm sorry, but we don't have malaria in the United States. We don't have it in Sweden. We don't have it in France. So we don't care. We can ban DDT and use something else on our crops. That's the fact that people of color, the fact that people in Asia or in Africa, they're the ones that are dying. I'm sorry, a lot of people in this country just don't care. And I think that's really wrong. I'm getting riled up, you can see. I feel very strongly. We have an obligation as, you know, a rich society, a rich nation. We have an obligation to really be positively acting in the rest of the world. And this is not a good example for us.